Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Jessie and this is the Knit Up and Die podcast episode 127 in limbo. Uh, as always, I'm going to start with my thank yous. I'm back to my cheat sheet. I just didn't like struggling between my computer and my paper, so I'll print on both sides and use it as best I can. Special thank you goes out to all of my subscribers, both new and ongoing. I love you guys. What you see here is ultimately all about you, and it's your feedback and your comments and your emails that drive the content of this and mean a lot to me. I'm always looking forward to hearing uh, about the projects you're doing and what you'd like to see more of. Hello and welcome go out to Trina and Karen. Thank you for adding me to your day. Special love and thanks go out to Joy, Monica, Nancy, Rachel, Leanne, Brenda, Faye, Mary, Marie, David, Donna, Amy, Tara, Diane, Allison, Barbara, Adriana, Wayne, Patricia, Lisa, Lette, Jorge, Kath, Bendy, Christy, Nitsi, Charlotte, Roseanne, Linda, Marie, Betty Ann, Scott and John, Jennifer, Heather, Kate, Janet, and Terry. Much love goes out to my Zoom family, Robert, Juanita, Paula, Brian, Katie, Eve, Jamie, Jen, Elizabeth, Shirley, Roz, and Nicole. I hope to see you guys really soon. A warm hello and thank you goes out to all of my patrons. You make this possible and I appreciate it so much. <clears throat> Pardon me. Life. <laughs> it's been two weeks. Um, that was not planned. That that was um, reactionary on my part. Um, you, I've, <laughs> if you have been watching my episodes, you know that I had a um, move planned at my my day job. We're moving to a new location. Uh, this episode is named in limbo for a number of reasons. One of them being that the move date has changed again. Um, we have been set off one more week. And the reasons for that are actually really intelligent. We are working with so much new technology that we have decided to roll it out in stages. So critical employees are over there. That means our providers are at our new location. They're working through the new system. They're dealing with the bugs. They're getting all set up. And then support staff are going to come over, which is not all of the same new technology, but different technology, and that gives our IT team more time to handle all the bugs and all the little glitches and deal with the training that's necessary on the new systems. Um, I think it's really intelligent. I, As much as I want us all over there and done, I think it's smarter to roll this out this way. And seeing a logical division like that actually helps me in all of the anxiety about the move because it, it's obviously planned. Mind you, this change was new and not something that was originally planned, but now that we're down to the wire and we're looking at things very logically, there's steps and there's order, and I am all good <laughs> with order and instruction and steps. So I'm feeling really good about um, the work move, which I'd had a lot of anxiety about. I've talked to you guys a lot about that. The move is very traumatic for me, and this is actually getting to a point where it's healing some of that, and I'm feeling a little bit better, but we're in limbo. <laughs> we're in limbo. Um, so that, that was one of the changes was uh, just the mental shift, and I, I kind of needed time to adjust to that. The other was that I have a dear friend who I work with, and I'm going to get all emotional, guys, I'm warning you right now, um, whose wife passed very suddenly. They have a young daughter. Um, his wife's mother had passed very suddenly a year earlier. They have struggled with her loss. Um, they have struggled with depression. And now this. While I am heartbroken for them, absolutely crushed for them, and I miss my friend. He has been out with this, and, and that's totally reasonable. I do not begrudge him a minute of that. Um, what this has done for me, beyond the loss of this individual, this wonderful woman, and the pain for this family, is that it's really brought to light how 
fragile this is, how important it is that we show appreciation at every opportunity because we never know. We never know. They were a loving, supportive, wonderful, kind, generous family. They knew up to the last minute that there was love. And I'm so grateful for that, that they have that. I believe that of my household. I know that my husband knows I love him. And I know that he loves me. But not all households have that. And if for a minute you think that you have somebody in your household that might not know, go fix it. Go fix it. Um, we never know when it's going to happen. And even if we think we know, if you have a terminal case, there's still shock when it actually happens. You're never prepared. So as you can tell by my emotional breakdown, <laughs> this really um, made last weekend very, very difficult for me and I was not in a position to sit down and talk to you guys. I, um, I did some knitting. I did some knitting. I did some uh, twisting and labeling and packaging of my trunk show <laughs> um, that I shipped out yesterday to Knit Circus. I'm so excited about that. Um, but I really just needed quiet time and I that's what I did last weekend was I took quiet time to grieve, to think, to meditate, to um, be unpleasant company <laughs> with myself, um, just to cope with it. it. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, and I, I, there are so many of you that are recent widows, recently lost parents. I see your Instagram posts. I grieve with you. The hardest thing for the peripheral people, people like me, <coughs> is knowing that nothing I say will take the pain away, will heal you, will make it better. I can only tell you I love you. But I can't stop all that's just happened and I can't make it better. I can't fix it. That's the hardest. And yet we try. <laughs> we, we grapple and we try to say the right things and we mean so well. But we are not experiencing what you're going through and that is a challenge. And it's a challenge for the people that are going through it to be gracious in that situation. And I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking in generalities, I'm not saying that anything has happened, that anybody has been hurtful or aggressive or, or uh, that nothing like that, nothing like that at all. I'm, I'm speaking in generalities about human nature. Um, Yeah. <laughs> death is hard. Death is hard. And the older we get, the more there seems to be death around us. And that's, that's life. That's how this works. Moving on. I, I need to step away from this. Thank you for hearing me. Life. <laughs> Let's go away on the polar end, shall we? Life. Yesterday, I spent hours, hours, doing something I, I love, something I enjoy. I repotted my house plants, <laughs> um, seeing life, making life grow, having green things in my world makes me happy. And I'm actually really sore and tired today because I had to move a lot of big heavy pots and I had to um, move plants from one pot to another and lug around soil and um, we actually, I, I actually had to put a plant down, which sounds bizarre, I'm sure. 
um, we have aloe plants in my home and my aloe plants grow to be huge huge what am I talking about I'm talking about a plant that two people have difficulty lifting together um, my aloe plant was well over four feet tall she was well over five feet across and she was in bloom but she had um I this is how weird I am our aloe plant is called Audrey Helpburn yes I'm, I'm goofy um, Audrey had just overgrown her pot and there comes a point where you can't get a bigger pot the pot I have is almost three feet across um, she had to go she she had to go she bore many many children she is the third generation of the original aloe plant that I inherited when I moved into this house and when I inherited it it was just three little leaves and it was no bigger than this um, and she got just as huge and we took babies from her and we had to put her down and then one of her children got just as huge and we took babies from her and we had to put her down and this is the, the third generation that we just put down and we have the fourth generation <laughs> and oddly enough the fifth generation because we, we keep propagating the babies um, in big pots and they're, they're headed for their explosive wonderful beautiful growth to take up a corner of my home and it, it's a lot of work it's a lot of work when you uh, have to use um, like a, a, a what a pot roast knife I, it's a great big long meat knife <laughs> to slice the fronds off and to put them in the compost and to to take down a plant of that size is it's it's depressing <laughs> it's a lot of work that goes into that um, so we're, we're sad at the loss of that plant but we moved all the plants around um, and we have next generations coming from the cuttings and from their, their offspring and I really just loved coming out into my living room this morning and seeing all the freshly repotted plants a couple new plants and see how full of life and how happy and green and fresh they all looked because they had new homes and they have new soil and they have fresh water and they have fresh sunlight and they're all rearranged and they've all been cleaned and there's something very very fulfilling and happy and welcoming about that and I love doing that I, I do it about twice a year you really need to repot your plants they they can only take so much from the soil um, and this this was an important thing for me to do this weekend to kind of do my own healing last night I went out to dinner with my husband as a uh, a celebration tomorrow is my birthday yay um, so that was a weird occasion because apparently I can't do math which is a terrifying thing to say as I say oh come come buy my patterns and, and knit my projects um, for some reason I had it in my head that I have been 47 for the past year when in fact I just turned 47 so I've managed to completely skip 46 somehow I think unless my math is still bad um, so I get to relive 47 Woo! Uh, weird weird thing I'm actually really happy in my age I always embrace my age I have never been one to lie about my age um, which is hysterical in this household because my husband will tell you he's 29 he is not um, he can get away with it though <laughs> but he embraces his youth and he stays young by keeping that mindset whereas I'm comfortable aging I'm happy aging I like my wrinkles I like my laugh lines I like seeing my face and knowing that's a history knowing I laughed, knowing I cried I'm okay with this, I, I'm, I'm happy with this <laughs> which looks ridiculous because I'm tearing up again um, just because I'm sad by abbreviated lives
I'm sorry guys. I, I told you this is going to be an emotional episode. <laughs> so, um, in line with the birthday, I had made a promise to myself that I was going to finish my How to Eat an Elephant Blanket by my 50th birthday, which having just turned 47 means I got years and I'm making progress on that. So let's start talking about some knitting, shall we? Let's, let's set aside some of the tears here. Um, last time I talked to you, I had been one square behind on my progress with my How to Eat an Elephant Blanket. I caught that up and I knit most of last week's. I caught that up. Was I just one square behind? I don't even remember now. I was one square behind at that point, so that meant that I had to do four squares for next weekend. There we go, which I did. And then I've gotten one square of this week's done. So I'm actually two squares behind now. This is where I'm at. I have my progress keeper right here down in this corner. This was the one I was behind. Here are the ones that I had to do last week and then here's mine for this week. But when I get up here this week, this coming week, I have the two to catch up and then I have my three for my regular quota. As I hold up four fingers, I'm really good at math. Um, but that actually is gonna finish this section and have me back to a whole square again so I can start another column. And doing this, setting this rule, this idea that I was going to do three squares a week has accomplished so much. It accomplished this entire column here. All that. All that. I am so happy with that. I feel so accomplished with that. We are now just at January 19th. This was a reality that I had, I believe I started this process in December. I've made no note of this, so I have to really look back at my notes. But I've made more progress in just this term of doing this than I think I made all last year. I, I really need to look at my notes that may I may be speaking way out of turn. But I made a lot of progress and I'm super happy with that and I feel a sense of accomplishment. I feel like I'm going to be able to do this well within my goal. Um, that goal was, I think, to get it done by my 50th. I think I did the math that that would bring it in at that point. Um, perhaps it was even more aggressive than that. I don't know. I'll need to, need to review my notes. <laughs> um, but I feel really positive about this and I'm looking forward to doing those five squares this week and rounding this off so that it's back to a square again and getting ready to start the next column. The size is fabulous. Again, this is my How to Eat an Elephant Blanket and I'm aiming to do a queen size blanket out of it. and. It's going to be just a wonderful, beautiful heirloom piece that will be here hopefully long after May. Um, if you're interested in my formula for this, there's not a true pattern, there's a formula. It's very adjustable, different sizes, different weights, different needles, um, but ultimately it's the instruction on how to get the nice black framing around each one so each color really pops. I have that instruction over on my project page, How to Eat an Elephant Blanket on Ravelry. If you're not a Ravelry user, feel free to message me and I will send you the information. I can email it to you, I can message it to you. Um, but it's a fun, fun project and it's really... Look at this! It's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. I love this. So that's where I'm at with my blanket. I made progress, but I'm a little bit behind again. Um, I finished my Brickyard sweater. Yes! I told you guys last time that it was blocking and I gave you guys a couple pictures of it blocking. But it's done done. Really done. I've actually been wearing it <laughs> for the past two weeks and I've worn it a lot. I've worn it, um, gosh I've probably worn it five times already. I wore it out to dinner last night. I love it. It is so beautiful. I have my little monkey label sewn in down here at the bottom because it's my yarn. 
So it's got my little monkey logo. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Let's try again here. There's my little monkey label. And it has the care and instructions on the back side for me. I wasn't sure about the color. I love it. I am super happy with it. I wear it often with a black turtleneck um, and just some gray jeans or some corduroys. And it's beautiful. I, I couldn't be happier with it. This is the Brickyard Sweater Modified um, by Elizabeth Doherty. I changed this textural stitch up here to keep in the same repeat. It is a very similar textural stitch, but it's slightly different. So if I wear my green one and then I wear my purple one, you're not looking at it going, oh my God, she's got this sweater in every color. I also changed out the body shaping so it's not an A-line shape, it's just straight. I did not do the split hem and I made it shorter than the original design. Other than that, it's exactly identical. <laughs> um, simple modifications, just to have a slightly different looking sweater. The fit on this is perfect. The instructions are so good that I was able to make these modifications, including changing out the textural stitch without confusion, without challenge, without difficulty. It's a beautiful, beautiful sweater. It's a wonderful pattern. Again, um, I, I can't commend the designer or their tech editor more. The, the pattern is really that well written. And I am super tempted to knit another one just because it goes so smoothly and it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern and accomplishment. Um, I, I, if you're looking for a top-down, seamless, in-the-round sweater, consider any one of Elizabeth's patterns. I can't imagine that any of her other designs would be a challenge, more so than I, this was wonderful, wonderful. So I did that, which basically was I finished blocking it and I sewed it on the label and I wore it a lot. I also have another sweater that I'm working on and I showed you guys last episode. This is Lozenge by Fatima Hines and I have made fabulous progress on this as well. I think I showed you that I finished the body. I have the first sleeve on. And I'm knit down to almost where they want me to stop. It's, it's an elbow length sleeve. That's not gonna work for me. <laughs> I like long sleeve sweaters. Um, so I need to sit down and I need to do some math to figure out how much more length is required and how many decreases I need to do over that span of time in order to get this down to a wrist length sweater for me. I am thrilled with my sweater. I am not thrilled with the errors in the publication of this pattern. That is not about the designer. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you're loving this pattern, if you're thinking this is really, really wonderful, and you happen to have the Vogue Knitting Holiday 2019 issue that it's published in, feel free to pop over to my Ravelry page, my project page, um, and check out my notes on the, uh, on the errors in it. I have made all the notes for everything that I found that was typos and wrong in the publication. If you're doing it and you're not a Bravelry user, message me, I'll send it to you, not a problem. Um, but I'm happy with that. I haven't made any progress since last weekend on it. I've been a little overwhelmed. <laughs> I had a couple of projects that I had started as travel projects. One of them was Jeans Cowl by Jamie McCandless. Um, brilliant design. We actually have paired up and we have a kit available on my, on my website over at DieMonkeyYarns.com. We have multiple color options to choose from with the kit. We're offering it in the fingerless. The pattern still comes with all four weight instructions. He has this in fingering, sport, DK, and worsted weight. And the pattern is really, really beautiful, regardless of which weight you knit it in. It's designed to be knit in whatever you have on hand or in the kit option. You'd be knitting it with my Samba base which is a fingering weight yarn. It's a high twist single. And 
I actually had another high twist single in my stash. It's not my Samba base, but it was one of those yarns that I have kept for years that is a really sumptuous. It has cashmere and silk in it. I had to find the right project. This was the right project. And so this morning, I bound off my cowl. There is my Pico Edge bind off. It is in desperate need of block. This is what happens when you have travel knitting. It gets all wrinkly <laughs> and it doesn't look like anything wonderful. Block your work. Wait until you see this post blocking. It will be stunning. Um, but I bound this off this morning and I'm very, very happy with it. I, it desperately needs its blocking. So let's see if I could show this off a little bit pre-block for you so you see what's involved here. We have this lovely lace down here at the bottom that looks all curly and crunkly with an eyelet band. And then we have this nice eyelet banding lace that goes up the body of the cowl. There's another ring of the eyelet and then this beautiful Pico bind off. Isn't that pretty? I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. I am very, very happy with this. I do desperately need to block it so that it can be in all of its glory and get some photos wearing it so that you can see it. This is marked down over in the shop so you get a great price for the yarn and the pattern. If you want just the pattern, pop on over to Ravelry. This is Jean's Cowl, again by Jamie McCandless. And I'm so proud to have the opportunity to work with you, Jamie. Thank you for this opportunity. So I got my cowl done. Yay. The other project that I was working on as a travel project is crochet. <laughs> and I haven't been traveling with it. Um, it actually grew so fast when I first got into this project that I never really traveled with it. It's been living beside my sofa, which is fine. I can, I, it's actually a nice alternate. Um, I'm going to start another travel project in the very near future as that's all done that will actually travel. But this is a nice alternate to have between working my blanket or working a sweater to stop for a minute and to do some crochet. So this is the Through the Clouds pattern by Rachie Nguyen. This is available on Ravelry and it is a crochet pattern like I said. I, I made one before and it's beautiful and I had added a fourth skein to it and I changed up the color blocking a little bit. I've shown you this already as far as progress had gotten on it. I don't actually know if I left a progress marker. I did, I left a progress marker. Um, I haven't made a lot of progress on it. What's important to note about what I'm doing is that I have used the pattern structurally only. I'm adding a skein to it, so I'm using four skeins instead of the called upon three skeins. And I am not doing the color blocking as prescribed at all. I'm really just listening to myself and looking at it and seeing whatever feels right about the next section, which pairing I want to do, what I want to add when I want to add it. And I'm just striping it any old way I want to. And I love the freedom of that. I love what it's doing. I think it is so beautiful. I love the purple and the orange together. I talked to you guys about um, struggling with another skein that I had actually bought thinking I was going to work with it in conjunction with the other three. And when I actually got down to working it, I didn't like it with the other three. And reviewed it with John, who's got a great eye, and he looked at it and said, purple. <laughs> and he's right, and the colors just are gorgeous. They make me happy. It feels very Southwest to me. It feels just, it's so pretty. But obviously, as I can just get this twisted, maybe I, I can hold the tails twisted behind me. I got a long way to go, and I've got a ton of yarn for it. So this is gonna just continue to ebb and flow in and out of whatever color changes I feel like at the time and I can't wait to see how it grows and changes. Um, I'm very impulsive about it where I'm like, oh that needs orange now, oh that needs the, the coral now, that needs the white one now, that needs the purple now. 
and I love that. I, there's not a section of it that I think, hmm, I should have done that. No, I, I'm very, very happy with it. To that end, I have a lot of ends I'm going to be weaving in, and I'm not really confident in weaving in ends in crochet. I just have never really learned how to do it proper, and I need to sit down and Google that and watch a YouTube video and figure out what the best way to handle that is. I'm not seeing how to do like a replicate stitch um, like I like I do in knitting. And because this is two-sided, I, I don't want it to be obvious. I really would like them to tuck in nicely and I don't want to have to try and tuck them into the edge as there's going to be a really bulky edge if that's the case. I'm very, very happy with this pattern. I'm very happy with how it's coming out and it's living next to my sofa and getting love when I'm tired of my blanket or at a sticking point with my sweater and that's that's where that's going at this time. That is what I've been knitting, that's what I've been crocheting, so let's talk about where we're headed. I had some acquisitions. <laughs> I talked to you guys that I had ordered some stuff in and I was waiting for it to come in. Um, one of the orders actually I had placed right before Christmas and these things take time and I'm good with that. I knew that was going to happen. It came in in time for the episode last weekend that I didn't do. Um, the good news about that is since then another, the other order I placed has come in as well. Um, so I have all of my acquisitions in one place ready to show you guys. I have a big mug of coffee this morning. <laughs> so there's going to be crinkling. I'm sorry, those of you with headphones on, I'm warning you right now. Watch out. I'll try to keep it as crinkle free as possible. My first acquisition that I want to show you is from Serenity Fibers. This is the colorway Rainbow Crow on the Merino Sock Base. Serenity Fibers was incredibly generous in how they packed and what they included. Um, I'm not really familiar. I found her on Instagram. Your Instagram advertising is working because I look at your pretty pictures and I click. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, really fast shipping on this really beautiful yarn. The color was dead accurate to the photo, which I am so delighted with because I took one look at this colorway and was in love. It's called Rainbow Crow. Her merino sock base is a 75% superwash merino, a 25% nylon, 463 yards. It is a four ply. She included, and you're gonna have a hard time seeing this before I take it out of the package, a little spot of tea, and there's a little stitch marker there. I'm gonna make a lot of noise and I'll edit this out as much as I can for you. Wanted to be sure you saw how beautifully packaged it was. There's my little cup of tea, positive, uh, sweet tangerine, positive energy. I love this. Although it gives me the jitters, it's got caffeine in it. <laughs> it's really tasty. Um, beautiful label, little stitch marker came with it. Look at that colorway. It is exactly what I imagined. If you had a black crow in front of you and the sun was hitting his wing, hitting all of his feathers, crows have that gorgeous thing where they're black, but they're not. And you see reds and blues and yellows and greens and all these beautiful colors coming off what looks like black feathers. That is exactly what this yarn has managed to capture. There is purple, there is yellow, there is gold, there is blue, there is teal, there is green, there is red, there is orange. It is a rainbow in the dark. It is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Serenity Fibers, I am so impressed. This is stunning. There's even little speckle type areas included in this where the colors are overlapping and interacting with each other. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. None. This is so beautiful. I, I think the only way that I am really going to enjoy this 
to really make it pop, to really make it as phenomenal as it is, is to pair it with black. I I want to show that color in its glory. And I, I can't think of how better to do it than with black. I love this. Love this. And you guys know I'm never shy about talking about other dyers and other designers because we all need to be celebrated for our artistry. Isn't that amazing? So happy. So happy. I'm going to set that aside safely, far from my coffee, because I really don't want to have to wash coffee out of that. Um, Serenityfibers.etsy.com. Check her stuff out. Really mindful, beautiful packaging, really fast shipping, really gorgeous colors. Really gorgeous colors. Um, in addition to that, I had purchased, and I think I told you guys, I made the um, shift cowl. I had to think about the, the name of the pattern. Um, I made the shift cowl. It was a project that I had picked up yarn for, and I started when I was at my trunk show. It unwound this fall, and it was colors that we had all picked out together, and I had been encouraged to kind of stretch my color box. And as I was working on this beautiful cowl, it's gorgeous, um, it, it occurred to me that it wasn't for me. It really was for my sister. It was her colors and was going to be gorgeous with her ski jacket and was a beautiful gift to give to her. And so my mindset just completely shifted on it and it became hers very, very early on. Um, I didn't show it. I kept it hidden because I know, Rachel, you watch my podcast. Thank you. And I wanted it to be a surprise for her. And so I knit that all up with the intent of A, giving that to her and B, making another one for myself because I enjoyed the process. I enjoyed the pattern. And there'll be notes down below about all this stuff. If I'm talking abstractly about patterns that you don't know what I'm talking about, check the show notes, check the um, credits at the end, hit pause, and you'll be able to see everything there. Um, as well as over on my posts about my, my podcast. Um, so I, I had wanted to pick out yarn again for that, and that's what I had done. And that yarn has arrived. Um, again, I'm going to make a lot of noise because i got to get this out of the packaging. It all came in one chunk here, uh, so I'll edit for sound. This was also a dyer that was new to me. I had placed the order just before Christmas knowing full well that there was going to be a delay before I got it. That's fine. That worked out beautifully for me. I don't really like receiving packages right around Christmas because uh, people steal. That's awful. Um, but for my shift cowl, I chose these three colors. Aren't these beautiful? This is Lolo Did It. New dyer to me. Again, I discovered her on Instagram. And these all interact so beautifully. It's like they were made to go together. My impression online was that this was more green and not quite so teal, but upon receipt, I am happy. <laughs> I am really happy because my one concern was that the others had teal in them and not quite so much the green that I thought I was seeing. These are beautiful and I think they're going to make a really interesting and beautiful shift cowl just because they all interact with each other but at the same time they are all distinct and their own. This has beautiful browns in it. It has speckles of orange and teal. It's got little hints of yellow in it. And this is Whisperers. This is on her Simple DK base. It is 100% superwash wool. It's beautiful. It's squishy. <laughs> it's beautiful. This is Call Me Debbie. Call Me Debbie is primarily teal. It has speckles of reds, oranges, and it has the yellow in it. The orange lends itself a little bit back towards the brown that you're seeing here real pretty together. Very happy with that. And then this one is Brother. And Brother is primarily a neutral cream with the orange speckles and teal and blue and some green speckles in there. Oh, and brown. <laughs> and brown. I knew that they all interacted. I think this is just going to be so beautiful together. I, I'm so happy with these. I'm trying to 
hold them so you can see it. This again is by Lolo Did It, and her website is lolodidit.com. Gorgeous. And I was so in love with Call Me Debbie, the teal one, that I bought it on her sock base as well. And this is her everyday sock. It's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And this one has a little bit more of the red in it than I saw on the other one. I think that is super pretty. I'm very, very happy with that. So, this is a guilty pleasure. This is a guilty pleasure. Look at that. Um, and, and actually, they're really quite handsome together. No decisions have been made. But this is going to be a shift cowl for myself in the DK weight. And this is going to be the next travel project. I have been dying to cake these up and get that started. But I wanted to show them to you guys first because they really are just stunning, stunning yarns. And why do I buy from other dyers? Because Dyeing yarn is ultimately an art. It really is. And it's just like, and I've talked to you guys about this before, it's just like all of us trying to make cookies across the country with the Toll House chocolate chip cookie recipe. Every one of us is gonna follow the same instructions and we're gonna end up with a different cookie. Every one of us. And each one is unique and beautiful and delicious and we all have our own techniques and we all have our own vision about color and what goes together. And these are yarns that I never would have made. I wouldn't have come up with this. I wouldn't have had the same results. That makes this so cool. That makes this so interesting. That's why I share techniques about my dyeing. Please reference back to my previous podcasts. I show you guys how to dye. It's only a jumping off point. You're never going to imitate somebody else's work exactly. You're never going to have the same thing. You can name it the same thing. You can use the same dye. It's still going to come out different. And that's what makes this industry so exciting, is we all get to create beautiful things. And they're unique. It's so cool. It's so cool. I'm grooving on this. So I have acquisitions. I have a new travel project to cast on. I have new things to dream about. My world is good. My world is good. What else is going on? Okay, I told you guys about the cowl kit on the website. Be sure to check that out. It is discounted down and is a really, really good value for a pattern and yarn. Um, I did change up the website so you get free US shipping on all orders over $50. I'm leaving that in place. Um, that is an expense that I am willing to swallow to get you yarn at an affordable price. And that gives you some wiggle room where you can get a couple good skeins and not be looking at another seven, eight dollars to ship. I'm willing to do that for you. I think it's important that it be accessible and that you not be crushed by shipping fees. I, I'll take the tax deduction on that for you. Um, trunk show, ha! I told you guys earlier this episode that I twisted and labeled all my yarn and it is out the door. It is gone. It has gone up to Knit Circus in Madison, Wisconsin, who is so very kindly is hosting me for the month of February. And my yarn will be there. I will not. However, my yarn will be there. And this is just a wonderful, amazing opportunity for me. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you. I am so happy to expand and be able to access more knitters and get my yarn in the hands of people that otherwise would only see me here. Now you can go and you can squeeze it in purpose. Uh, in purpose. Now you can go and you can squeeze it in person at uh, Knit Circus in Madison, Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward. Ha ha. I had done a poll and I asked you guys what you wanted to see what you wanted to do. You guys told me that you wanted some knit alongs, some giveaways, some live podcasts, and some holiday activities. Those are the big ones, the ones that got the most response, and that's where I'm really targeting. I'm looking at these things and trying to make that happen for you. The first live episode will be next Sunday, January 26th. 
it will be at 1 p.m. on the East Coast, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time where I am, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. I am at GMT minus 7 if you're doing math. There are converters online. I'm not going to list every time here. Um, but that is my goal. That is what we're doing. Next Sunday, I will be live via YouTube. Come in. Join me. Uh, once you sign in, I think you have to have a Google account. You will be able to actually message me live, and I'll be reading your messages while I sit and knit and have some coffee with you guys. Or 3 p.m. I probably won't be drinking coffee as that is the first day at my new location if the move goes as planned. Um, but I'm very excited to enact some of those live episodes for you. It's fun to actually interact with you live time and I hope that you're able to join me for that. Otherwise it'll be kind of a boring episode. I will still have my, my cheat sheet and I will have something to talk about even if nobody's talking to me so it'll still be a podcast episode. Um, it's just the opportunity to interact with me during a podcast episode and that's always fun. Moving forward um, there was interest in a knit along and there was the reminder that I needed to do the Squirkle tutorial. I had this brilliant idea. <laughs> Let's do both. Um, so what I'm plotting, what I'm planning, what I'm going to try to do is we're going to do a Squirkle knit along with tutorial. See what I did there? <laughs> Because it only makes sense. The logical conclusion. Um, that is going to enable us to do several different things. Instead of me trying to stage all the steps of the squircle in one episode that's difficult for you to sit down and do because you can't knit that fast, instead what we're going to do is a knit along and I'm going to do the tutorial for each stage as we go. Yes, that makes so much sense. Um, I'm very excited about that. That's going to be a lot easier for me to work with and you'll be able to work along. Yay! <laughs> so, um, that having been said, watch this space for more information. Be watching my blog. If you just go over to DieMonkeyYarns.com uh, and scroll down through the main page or click on my blog link, I'm pretty sure there's a blog link, you'll see posts about this as this starts to churn along and ultimately we're going to make some socks together. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Again, watch the space for all the details. I will get you dates and what we need to do in order to get set up to do that. Yay! That, I think, is everything I have for you guys today. I'm glancing around to make sure there's nothing that I missed. I think we're good. I think we're good. My coffee's starting to get cold. Ugh. Oh yeah, definitely in need of a heat up. <laughs> so, and I have some blanket scores I need to go do and I need to get set up for my live episode and publish that time and date. And I need to... I got a lot of things I gotta go do. I love you guys. I mean that. I love you. I appreciate you. And I hope that you feel that. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. Go love somebody. <laughs>